Hey everyone, it's Adam again. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about calibrating the Disto X. I've been working on a procedure for doing that which doesn't require having a large number of spots on a wall that you have to target. I've been finding it increasingly difficult, so I was working in caves trying to make it better. Um, this method actually does work much better in a cave, um, but I'm not able to get to a cave right now, so the backyard will have to do. So, for starters, you need a flat surface in order to use this method. The flat surface makes sure that we get the same data every time. The other thing I'm using is an 8 inch square, and this has a 45 degree angle on it, and that's going to help me do my calibration. The other thing I need to do is I need to set up my disto to use this method. So I'm going to press the clear button and the smart button simultaneously and hold them down until it goes into calibration mode. Then I'm going to press the timer button in order to turn on the timer. I'm going to use the minus button to subtract it down until it says three seconds. So now I have my disto in calibration mode and I have a timer set for three seconds. So once I press the button, it'll take three seconds to do a shot. Now I have set up here my flat surface and my compass. By holding it down like this, I now have a not almost 90 degree edge right here, which I can use to brace my calibration or brace my disto. So by turning it and pressing it up against the thing, every time it will be pointing in the same direction. I don't have to worry about aiming because I'm using the case of the disto in order to aim the device for me. So that being said, I go through all of the procedures for the disto using every single shot. I'm extremely careful to hold pressure on this right now because I want the first set uh, 14 sets of shots to be extremely good. So for my procedure, I'm going to hold on to my uh, flat surface here, creating a 90 degree angle. Now I don't have the timer set the entire time that I'm doing these tests. I put it in calibration mode and when I can use the targeting button, I'm going ahead and using it because it's just quicker. Press the button twice and it takes a shot. Turn it 90 degrees, same thing twice to take a shot, 90 degrees, twice to take a shot, 90 degrees, twice to take a shot. And now I am done with one out of the many different shots that I need to take. Now to do the next set, flip it over, repeat. Now that I've done that, the disto is going to have to go through a new set. When I face it like this, I can easily press the button twice. When I have it like this, once again, easily press the button twice. But next shot, I'm not able to press the button anymore. So I simply come here, press the timer, it brings up the timer option, and now I have three seconds from when I press the on button before it takes a shot. So I have to be a little bit quick here. Wait for it, and it should be done. Now, same thing when I push the button up here. Well, now it's actually taken off the timer. I can press the button here twice. So now I've got 12 shots, which is the correct number that I'm supposed to have. Rinse and repeat. Turn it around. I'm able to get shots. And now I've done all the base shots. Up, down, left, right, forward, backwards. That is six different shots times four. The number should say 24 on the disto. Then we go on to the next part of the calibration. For the next set of my calibration procedure, I'm actually going to use the 45 degree angle on this device. In order to do that, I'm going to set it in a corner here at approximately 45 degrees angle here. From, I had it at here and now I've got another 45 degree angle. I'm going to hold the disto in place. Now these shots aren't quite as important as the last set, but they are still kind of important. So I'm going to try and line this up as well as I can with the edge here lined up on both devices. And this will enable me to go ahead and get shots at 45 degrees. Double press to take and turn double press, turn, double press, turn, 
double press. I now have taken one more set of data using this device. Go through the remaining sets of data. Now that I've done the downward angle and the upward angle on this slope, I need to turn the device another 45 degrees in order to get the next set of information. I will repeat up and down. Once again, I've done up and down, turn it 90 degrees in order to get the next set of shots. Every time I do this, I check to make sure that the number at the end of a set is a multiple of four. That helps me double check to make sure that I'm taking the right number. So now having run this calibration, this last time I ran through it pretty quick. And when I get my calibration coefficients, I'm looking at an error of 0.4946 degrees or a max error of 2.2 degrees. Now that's a little bit more than the last time I ran this. So the moral of the story here is that you need to slow down and make sure that you are exactly 90 degrees on every shot, especially those first 24 shots or those first sets, the six sets of four. Um, now, the last time I did this, I also got 0.3 degrees with a max error of one degree. Now, there are some other factors going on here I know that 20 feet over there is a major sewer pipeline made out of metal. Also, I've got a house behind me that's running electricity. Last time I ran this, I ran this in the evening. And so there are a lot of different factors that could affect it. So next time I run this, it's gonna be in a cave. But when you're running the calibration, make extremely sure that you have 90 degrees, make sure that you're not rotating your edge and be very careful not to move the device while you're pressing the button and you should get a pretty decent calibration this way.